Look at how hideous the bumpers are. We're gonna paint the bumpers to match. We're gonna remove the side moldings, top and bottom. We're gonna remove the emblems, so we've got a nice clean look. We're gonna black out the grill and headlight doors. It'll change the look of the car. We'll change the wheels and tires, but we've gotta get the paint off. So the first thing we're gonna do is double tape all the seams around the doors and windows and so that we don't get any paint remover to run in there. We're gonna use this aircraft stripper. It's an economical way to strip a car. You need to have safety factors in place. Methylene chloride, when it gets on the skin or gets in the eyes, can do serious damage. So we wear gloves, we wear eyeglasses, and it does have an odor to it. It doesn't even hurt to wear a respirator at this point in time, because this stuff can nauseate you when you breathe it. But look at how it takes the paint off. It's amazing how it'll react. Now, because it's got two paint jobs on it, here we noticed they had drilled holes to pull a dent and neglected to weld them. We've got to deal with that. So we go in and knock the plastic filler that's been applied out of those holes. Now it's not enough just to drill them out and weld them up. We want to make sure that our welds stay. And the way to make that happen is using a countersinking tool. We just countersink the edges so our welds will have a great edge to hang on to. Look at how nice that chamfers those out. Now we do that to every hole we're going to weld on the body, including where the emblems were where the moldings were, before the welding takes place. Now prior to doing the welding, we need to clean the metal. We want to make sure we've got a nice clean surface. I highly recommend using a 24 grit, 5 inch high speed grinder. But don't run it at high speed, just run it fast enough to clean the adjacent metal. Body work is in the hands. This is the wrong way. You need to lay the hand flat and move it back and forth. And you don't even have to look at the area. The hand will tell you what's high and what's low. And you need to train yourself to be able to use your hands to feel the body. Now we're gonna weld up our holes using a welder that's designed specifically for sheet metal. You could also gas weld the holes using braze. Put the ground on. Put on your suit, protect yourself. It welds quick, puts on minimum build, uses reduced heat, but little or no warpage with a wire. Now mixing the filler is critical. You need a clean, flat board. You need to knead the hardener to make sure that the benzoyl peroxide is well mixed in. This is critical. Many body men and painters miss this step. Laboratory testing has shown the benzoyl peroxide in the hardener to begin separating within four hours. Putting in the right amount of hardener in the filler is, is critical. They do have a color guide that makes sure that you get the right amount in. Keep that guide handy when you're doing your mixing if you're new at this. Here we put on what we think is needed. And don't chop at the filler like this. This puts air bubbles in it. The right way is hard, medium, light, hard, medium, light. And you're doing this much faster when I'm actually mixing. I'm slowing down so you can see the action. And then I'll squeegee down to the board and get it off of my squeegee completely, even taking off the edge to make sure that there's no plastic filler that goes unmixed. It's all got to touch the hardener. And you keep doing this until it looks uniform. The minute you're satisfied with the look, the uniform look, you can begin putting it on the car. Now what we're doing is working out air bubbles by mixing it this way. And we put it on the car the same way, using hard pressure and squeegeeing it down. Air bubbles can be horrendous when you've got a paint job that's got plastic filler in it with air bubbles and that starts to show on your paint job, not a good thing. Now we're very careful to put it on evenly and don't put on too much. It goes on a lot easier than it comes off, I'll tell you that. And you don't want to work harder than you have to. The idea is using the hand, know where to put it, the heaviest, and then squeegee it on as nice and even as you possibly can because it reduces your sanding time. The better job you do of putting the filler on, 
the least amount of work you're going to have taking it off. Now you notice I'm going the other direction here. There's no reason not to back up because whatever way you pull that filler is the way it goes. Now we're going to use a dustless sanding system here. Use 36 or 40 grit. Again, a gloved hand or a hand with a rag in it. Remember, we don't want to transfer oil to the bare metal. That can cause delamination. Try to keep bare skin contact to an absolute minimum at all times during the paint job. That's what we're doing here. We're coming in now and hand blocking. And there's no reason not to guide coat at this stage if you wish. You can use a little primer, contrasting color, spray a little of that on there when you're blocking to see where the high and low spots are. But they're showing up rather well. When you start hand blocking, everything starts to come home. You'll start to find out what's high and what's low. And then by using the hand, the gloved hand or the rag in your hand and feeling back and forth, it tells you right where you are. And we X the block. Do you notice how we were doing that? Xing one way, Xing the other way, but holding the block. There's a low spot. You can see that it's not being sanded. Different size blocks for different areas. We'll use the longer block for the big flat areas. This is critical. We want this bodywork to be dead flat. It sands real easy. Use the small blocks for getting into the tight spots to make the curvature out to this fender lift. Double check yourself. Now I like to take some 80 grit and put it on a block and take the tops off of the plastic filler before I come in with my spray filler or my primer. This reduces the amount of filling that's required. But don't try to finish it completely out with 80 grit. That would be a mistake. You work too hard sometimes and go nowhere. Now we're pretty much ready. We've got so much body work on the side of this car, we've decided to use a spray filler. And there are many different companies that make spray fillers. And they're very high solid polyester based and they really put some millage on. Probably four times more per coat than a primer would. And we're gonna do that just strictly to the bodywork areas so that we get one more chance to block everything. Now blow it down real good, wipe it down again with a good final wash solvent. Don't use tar wax and grease remover at this stage because many of those tar wax and grease removers will soak into the filler and can cause you severe problems. Make sure the product you're using is stated as a final wash. Now we make one called KC20.